So the title of my paper today, uh, I called it Legitimation Shuffle, Sources of North Korean Legitimacy. So um, the idea behind this paper is if you talk to many people, the idea, the idea that North Korea should even exist as a country is quite often doubted by a lot of people from Western democratic countries. It's a pariah state, it's the hermit kingdom, it's it's, it's often dismissed as basically an abnormality uh, among state, the international state system. But no state can exist as long as North Korea has without some form of legitimacy, whether or not we would like to admit it. So, whenever you, North Korea, or North Korea is discussed in terms of legitimacy, it's always in terms of its lack of legitimacy, human rights violations, uh, you know, uh, money laundering, uh, uh, cyber attacks, things like that, things that are not, you know, don't put you in good standing in international society. So, and basically every index that measures all of these forms of legitimacy, uh, North Korea is near the bottom of all of them. But, as I said earlier, North Korea would not exist today if there wasn't some way that it legitimizes itself to its people. Um, welcome. So, while it is one of the most hard authoritarian states in the world, um, the regime itself does employ uh, a number of ways in order to ensure that the people don't rise up and overthrow them. Um, and in my literature review, I, I examined many different theories that authoritarian regimes use as tools to try and stay in power. And then I kind of combined them all in this table. I don't, it's an ugly table, but it has the information that I need to make my argument. So if we think of North Korea, one of the ones that comes out, the, I, the manipulation of ideas, the idea that Kim Il-sung was this amazing leader, and he would show up everywhere and give people advice on how to run the factory better or how to better, better harvest rice or whatever he showed up to do, he knew everything about it. And that was part of the, the Bek Dusan line and, and the mythology of Kim Il-sung and, and uh, family. Uh, restrictive social policies, I think uh, we're well aware of that. Institutional coup crimping, so putting people in positions that are loyal to you in key positions in the government so that you don't have challengers. Um, also, I, I think we all know that the North Korea regime also has used purges quite extensively. Now, if we look at the bottom, this is also part of my argument because liberal democracies look at North Korea and they say it has no legitimacy, but any state that overuses coercion, if the government is coercing the people so extensively and so constantly that they, they really have nothing to lose if they rise up, they might as well. So um, this is not a sign of strength in an authoritarian regime, this is a sign of weakness. That's one of the arguments I'm trying to make. And that will lead to popular dissent, economic recession, etc. So, so as I mentioned earlier, the Bek Dusan line, the mythology of Kim Il Sung and what an amazing leader he is, and that we all know it probably isn't true. Um, but after he died, it was pretty endured hardship because it lost all of its communist bloc trade partners and friends. So during uh, the famine in the 90s, they adopted the Songdun policy where they gave the resources to the military and said, we need them to protect us from the evil Americans and uh, their southern puppets. But 
in reality, it was just a manner of coup proofing and making sure the military uh, would remain loyal to them in a time of hardship. When uh, Kim Jong-un came in, uh, they adopted the Pyongyang line, which meant we're still going to be strong militarily, but we also want to have some good stuff economically. Um, and this is, a, I think, an acknowledgement by the North Korean regime that the Songun policy may have an expiration date and they have to, at some point, give North Korea something to look forward to in life. So outside of, so those previous discourses, those were all things that the North, North Korea uses to legitimize itself. Outside, um, if you go to the, the North Korean human rights, uh, the center, center for North Korean human rights? Database center. Database center, right. So you'll hear stories whenever they have an event, you'll hear stories of forced famine, where they'll talk about this report on human rights or their own. Um, of course, we see nuclear weapons program is always in the news. Seventh test forthcoming. Criminal activities, so cyber attacks. Fun fact, uh, this year, North Korea has already made a billion dollars from cyber warfare, cyber attacks. That's crazy. Um, and then the last one there, summit legitimacy. So going back to the Trump summits, uh, if we were to refer back to the table, by being in the same room with the president of the United States, that conferred a lot of legitimacy on Kim Jong-un. I don't know that it is something that would keep him in power, but definitely it made him look better than he was. Okay. So when you talk about North Korean legitimacy, like I said, for international viewers, it's almost always in the context of being illegitimate or a rogue state. Um, but there are many different domestic means that North Korea uses to legitimize its rule and stay in power. Uh, but I was thinking about this today, actually. Um, when you talk about North Korea and Korea, it's always Bukhan Munjae. But Bukhan Chate Munjae. da? That's kind of what popped into my head. But so we're always trying to figure out how to fix North Korea. But I don't know that if it can be fixed without it completely changing to a different regime. I think right now it's just a, a vicious circle where they keep doubling down on authoritarian means of staying in power, which makes them look bad. And uh, I don't, I think it's almost path dependent where they can't give up their nuclear weapons. So we're kind of stuck with them. So I don't even know if it's a problem anymore. It's just a situation. And there are a lot of observers that say if they were to give up their nuclear weapons, then all of the sources of legitimacy they've relied on throughout their history would suddenly be meaningless and possibly that would be the downfall of North Korea. And um, I don't know, I, I, I like to think if, if somehow North Korea was able to be freed of sanctions and sing, they, they hired all the management team from Singapore to go in and make it into a Singapore type authoritarian state, maybe they could salvage themselves, but I, I'm very skeptical that, that something like that could ever happen. But at the end of the day, my, my point is that North Korea may be legitimate in the eyes of the outside world, but in the eyes of its people, at least to some degree, it, it, it has legitimacy. So I, I'm trying to, one of the, the things I rail against in my, in my paper is this idea that legitimacy only means democracy and liberal values. So. Um. <laughs> so 
we're not going to do questions right right now. But if you if you have questions afterwards, I'd be more than happy to pretend I know the answer. <laughs>